Today we're going to talk about symmetry and even odd functions, and then we're going to transition into composition of functions. So let's begin with our symmetry and even odd. Real quick, this is your entrance, entrance ticket, ticket, so here's our preview. Okay. First things first, let's talk about symmetry. Now here's our formal definition. I'm never going to ask you to remember a formal definition unless I specifically tell you you need to know this. So all we really need to understand from symmetry is what it looks like both graphically and how to solve it algebraically. Um, we also have a tabular approach, which we're going to start with, but it kind of ties into our algebraic or graph, depending on how you look at it. So the first one we have is our symmetry with respect to the x-axis. So this means that if I draw that line through the x-axis, it's going to reflect on top and on bottom. The uh, symmetry with my y-axis, same thing, if I draw that line, I've got a mirror image. And finally, if I rotate through my origin, so think if I've got a line right here and I just rotate this graph, what did that look like? Well, I've got symmetry on that side. So. We also have our algebraic test. We're going to be replacing, ver uh, we're going to be replacing our variables with a sign change. That's the big algebraic solve we're going to be doing today is sign changing. So let's look at that cheat sheet that you've got. So we're going to talk about which test, how, which sign is going to change, what we do next, and what that sentence would look like. So first things first, let's look at our x-axis test. I'm going to change the sign of y. Went a little far, my apologies. So I'm going to change the sign of y. If it matches the original function, then I get to write this sentence. The graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Okay, if not, then I cross out my work and I move on to my next test. My next test is the y-axis test. So here, I replace my x with negative x. So again, we are simply changing the sign. So, if it matches the original function, I get to write my handy dandy sentence. If not, I cross it out and move on. If we are testing the origin, I'm going to change both sides, both x and y. If it matches the original function, I write my sentence. If not, then that means none of the above worked. That means we have this sentence. The graph is not symmetric. Now, why do I keep mentioning these sentences? This semester and next, we are working on free response questions, which means you have to work on your math literacy. Can I write paragraphs and essays using math language and math notation? And can I write them correctly? So here's our first little work into math literacy. You must write your sentences like this or similar to this. It must have the language that it is symmetric. It must have the language that where your symmetry has respect to and then what it is, whether it's x-axis, y-axis, origin, or no symmetry. Okay, so let's do an example. We have this function, x minus y squared equals 1. So if I just have that function, I have two approaches. I have the tabular approach, which we're going to start with, and the algebraic approach, which we'll see later. So here's our tabular approach. I went ahead and filled in your x's for you. However, if you this is your first time seeing it, just a recall for those of us who can't remember, I would start with a simple table, whether you do it vertically or horizontally, it depends on you. And a lot of you like to do x and y, and then you just do your 0, negative 1, negative 2, et cetera, 1, 2, et cetera. So just as a reminder how to set up your initial table I know that these values are working, so I gave them to you, but you will want to start around your origin and kind of expand beyond, okay? Also, we could solve that y. How easy is that, right? I plug in 2 for my x and I solve. So this first one is simply going to be 2 minus y squared equals 1. Bring that 2 over, gets me negative y equals negative, or sorry, squared equals negative 1, because 1 minus 2 is negative 1. I drop those negatives from both sides, and the square root of 1 is 1 positive or negative uh, 1. However, we're going to look for that positive value because that's our correct solve for this. So that answer was 1. Now, I'm not going to waste your time because this is algebra and you know how to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that out for you. But as a reminder for those of us who kind of have a summer brain and need to recall, there's that information for you. So here it is filled out. So what are we going to do with that tabular approach? I can look at the pattern that I see. I can kind of look at it and say, okay, what do we know it's doing? But some people are visual, and so it's really easy to sketch a graph. I'm a visual learner, so I need this myself. So at 2, I'm at positive 1, and at 2, I'm at negative 1. At 5, I'm at positive 2 and negative 
2. And at 10, I'm at positive 3 and negative 3. And what does that look like? If I start to chart that graph out, you know, I'm not 100% sure. It's possible it's an absolute value. It's possible it's quadratic. I would need to do a little bit more of a deep dive to really recognize this graph. But what can I see? I can see its symmetry right here. We have a line I could draw right through it, and it would reflect both above and below. And what axis is that? That's our x-axis. So this graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. That's my finished sentence. Okay. Let's look at another example. Actually, let's do a wrap-up. I've got a page for wrap-up. My apologies, I forgot. So there it is. There's my true graph. It was a quadratic. If you couldn't recognize it, you could kind of remember where's my squares. It's actually, technically, it's a square root function because you could look, I've got my positive and negative square root function, but um, some of you might see this as a sideways quadratic. Um, so here's my sentence. The graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. So again, remember, it's so important we write that sentence. Okay, here's another one. What happens with this question? Ah, okay, well here's our, here's our y values. And I lost my graph. So I made my thing a little backwards, my apologies. So let's see if I can remember this. So this was negative, sorry, negative one half. And negative 2 and negative 8. Okay. Negative 2, negative 8, 8, 2, 1 half. That I remember. So let's plug that into my graph. I come to negative 8. And this was negative a half. I go to negative 2, and this is negative 2. I go to negative a half, and this is negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8. And then up here, it's at 8. I think this is 8. I'm just kind of guessing a little. Let's say it's over here. Sure. So if I connect these graphs, these dots, I can recognize, one, I can already recognize what this parent function um, is, this function is based off of, and it's my reciprocal function, right? 1 over x. If I was confused about that, I could have just solved right here. This becomes y equals 4 over x, so that shows me it's similar to my reciprocal function, except it's got a different coefficient. Okay, but can I see the symmetry? Absolutely, right? If I flip it this way, it does not have y-axis symmetry. It's gonna make a different graph. If I flip it this way, it does not have x-axis symmetry. It's gonna place this in the wrong quadrant. But if I think of my origin and I rotate these 180 degrees, they are gonna flip sides, which means I have Symmetry about my origin. So how is that sentence going to look? Let's find out together. So the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. So correct sentence. All right. As a review, because we're about to move into our algebraic approach, as a review about our assigned properties, I know most of us know, but let's go ahead and review. If a positive is multiplied or divided by a positive, it becomes positive. A positive and a negative becomes negative. Same with a negative and a positive because you have that commutative property. And finally, a negative and a negative is going to be positive. So here's your little cheat sheet to fill out on your guided notes. Positive, 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 negative, and blah, 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 blah. So this is a reminder about sign properties. I know most of us know it, but just recall. So let's do the algebraic approach. We're going to look at that same original function, x minus y squared. So x minus y squared is equal to 1. So let's look at that. We're going to do three simple steps, and I'm going to remind you of this every time. We are going to change the sign. So remember to follow that cheat sheet that we made, you know, which test am I doing, which sign am I changing, which variable am I changing. A note here, to, to avoid errors, let's go ahead and take that variable, place it in parentheses, Put its negative in the parentheses, and all other function parts are going to be outside of the parentheses. Okay? The second thing I'm going to do is simplify, which simply means what do I have to do to remove that parentheses? And finally, we're going to compare it to the original function. If it matches the original function, we hit that test. That means it has symmetry in that test. If it doesn't match, we either have to test others, or if we've tested all three, it means there is no symmetry. So let's do this first one. And here's that cheat sheet made real simple for you. So we're going to start with the x-axis test, 
which tells me to change my variable y to negative y. Okay? So, starting with that x-axis test, we're going to change the sign. So, I come over here. My x doesn't, doesn't move. My minus, it doesn't change. But here's my first thing that changes, that variable y. So I place it in parentheses. I make it negative. All other function parts stay outside, so my square is going to stay outside. It's equal to 1. Now I emphasize this so that you do not make errors. If you can see this visually, you can move past this, that's fine. But if you need this information, if you want to avoid mistakes, this is how I suggest doing it. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify. So, what happens when a negative is squared? Negative y times negative y, it's going to become positive. In fact, a reminder, any even exponent, negative y squared, negative y to the fourth, negative y to the sixth, any even is always going to become positive. It's our odds that we have to test. Okay? Finally, we're going to compare. All right, so it becomes this. So what happens? Is how, what does this look like compared to my original function? So x minus y squared equals 1 is going to match my original function. It is equal to it. That means this particular function has at least symmetry to the x-axis. We already knew this because this was our first example that we did graphically. So even though ah, we know that the graph has symmetry of the x-axis, we should still continue to test the rest. One, so that you know how each one works, but also so that you can verify that there's not double symmetry somewhere. Okay, Let's go ahead and do the y-axis test. So first thing we're going to do, change the sign. With the y-axis, we're changing the x. So I'm going to bring down that x, place it in parentheses, and make it negative. I'm going to ignore the rest of the function, bring it down exactly how it is. Second, I'm going to simplify. What can I do to remove these parentheses? Well, that's simple. I just drop them. That's just positive and negative. There's add and subtract. There's no squaring, exponents, multiplication, division, so I don't have to worry about it. So it's just negative x minus y squared equals 1. Let's compare it to the original function. Does it match? In fact, it does not match. That means it does not have symmetry with the y-axis. So since it does not have symmetry with the y-axis, I'm going to continue testing. My final test is the origin test. So I ch change my signs. Which one are we doing with the origin? We're changing both. So my x and y are going to be in negative in parentheses. I'm going to make them negative. All other function parts stay out of the parentheses. I simplify. Negative x is going to stay negative x. But negative y squared is going to become positive. OK? So a negative and a positive, that's so minus a positive, is still going to be minus. I compare it to the original, and it is not equal. Therefore, I have tested the x, I have tested the y, I have tested the origin. The only one that was true was my x-axis. So, we write our complete sentence to get full credit. The graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Let's do one more, and this one I've got just pulled up for you so you can see. So, our xy is equal to 4. That was the second graph we tested. We already know the answer. We know the answer is the origin. But just to make sure, let's test it algebraically. So my x-axis test, I replace my y with negative y. Negative, sorry, positive times a negative is going to give me a full negative. So negative xy does not match my function. So I cross out and move on. My y-axis test, I change my x to a negative. Same thing, negative xy is not equal. Cross out and move on. Finally, there should have been, there's a typo on here, my apologies. Should have looked like this. Negative x times negative y would get me positive xy. Therefore, the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay, it's as simple as that. Don't overcomplicate this. Don't make this harder. All right, so let's move on to our second section. Let's talk about our even and odd functions. Again, not a hard concept. All we're doing is messing with the signs. That's it. So, in your little cheat sheet, you have some information. So if we're talking about our even functions, that means you have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. And here's your algebraic that you need to write down. f of negative x has to be equal to f of x. In your cheat sheet, you have under the odd function, you're going to write that it has symmetry with respect to the origin. And here's your algebraic that f of negative x would actually be equal to the entire function being negative. That means you have to figure out all the sign changes in that function. So, 
let's look at a graphical and algebraic approach to these. So here's our first graph. It's a quadratic that's been transformed. So is this function even, odd, or neither? Okay, so let's start with neither. Neither means I have zero symmetry. Does this graph look like it has zero symmetry? No, so it's not neither. What about odd? Odd means I have symmetry through the origin. That means if I rotate this, it's going to have 180 degrees, it's gonna reflect that way. Mm, that's not what's happening here. We actually have symmetry amongst the y-axis, which means, or I'm sorry, I made a mistake earlier. I said neither means we have zero symmetry. That's not necessarily true. We could have x-axis symmetry, and it would still be a neither function. It would not be even or odd. So we have y-axis symmetry here, which tells me it is even. Okay, but let's test that algebraically. So this was the equation, x squared plus two. So what are we gonna do when we make it even? Well, for both of them, we are simply gonna make the x variable negative. If it's even, it's gonna return the original function. If it's odd, you're gonna change all of the signs of the function, not one, not two, all of the signs. So let's test this. First thing I do is replace with negative x. Put it, put it in, what happens when negative x is squared? It stays positive. Therefore, if negative x, f of negative x is equal to f of x, it must be even. We knew this, you just tested it graphically. I'm showing you the algebraic approach. Let's look at another one. Is this function even, odd, or neither? So does it have y-axis symmetry? Nah, it's not gonna do that. If I rotate this 180 degrees, is this hump gonna turn into that one? And is this one gonna turn into this one? Absolutely. That means it has odd, it is an odd function. But let's test that algebraically. So here's my original function, x cubed minus 2x. All I'm gonna do is change the sign. So place my x's in parentheses, make them negative. What happens when negative x is cubed? Guess what, it's gonna become positive. What happens with negative two times negative x? That's gonna become positive two x. So that becomes negative x cubed plus two x. So if I compare it, is it the original? No, so it can't be even. Is it the exact opposite? Positive, negative, negative, positive. Hey, it is. That means my f of negative x is equal to the negative function. So it must be odd. Finally, we have this graph. And you might look at that and say, that's a quadratic. Quadratics are symmetric. Sure, okay, but does this have symmetry on the y-axis? If I take this, and place it over here, does my function continue already? No, it does not. I'm allowed to reflect it, but it does not have symmetry, uh, at least through the y-axis. So, if it doesn't have symmetry through the y-axis, then I'm gonna test the origin. If I rotate this 180 degrees, well, no, there's nothing going on in these other sectors, so it can't be odd. Therefore, it must be neither, but let's test it. So, I'm gonna make my x negative. Went ahead and placed it in a parenthesis. If I distribute that out, well guess what? This is not gonna match. My f negative x is not gonna be the original function. Okay, because think about that foil. Negative x minus three times negative x minus three is not gonna be the exact same as x minus three times x minus three. But is it the exact opposite? Well, this is x minus three. This is negative x minus three. Hmm. Okay, well, probably not, but even if I wanted to check, this is positive one, this is positive one. Therefore, nothing changed, it didn't become opposites, so it can't be f negative x is equal to negative of the function. So if neither of those work, my function is neither. Okay? For our exit tickets today, work, I'm going to ask you to identify symmetry from this table. So you have to look at this, Maybe sketch it, in, sketch it out, maybe think about the pattern and figure out what symmetry this has. You're also gonna have to figure out whether this function is even, odd, or neither, simply based on the graph. I'm not gonna give you the function itself. 